Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Today, I have one of my favorite people in Housewives. Like, this is actually a really good person. I always call her the reliable narrator on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because you can trust what she's saying. And that's why I'm so frustrated when people seem to come for her on the show, off the show, and it is ridiculous. And listen, we could talk about all of her accomplishments. I mean, she is the creator with her brother of Life Refreshed Real Cocoa, which is one of the top selling cocoa coconut waters of all time, which is insane, but I think she is just amazing, and she's always just been so good to me and this show. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Crystal Kung Minkoff, welcome back to the show. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I got to tell you, I haven't seen tonight's episode, but I am glad to see you because that means you are alive. You're still alive. I am still alive. I'm still kicking, barely. We saw the Spain trip and your blood pressure was going off the charts. So I am happy to see you in front of me. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, How is your, like you are in the off season now because we know they filmed the reunion last week. Um, You know, the off season, I figured you'd be like on a beach somewhere celebrating the intensity of getting through another season. I mean, I guess what was the experience like for you on season 13? Yeah, well, I am going to Mexico next week, and so I will be on the beach. There we go. There we Um, go. Zoe is turning nine, and she said, Mommy, can we do a mother-daughter trip to Mexico? So I said, okay. Uh, So that's sort of (laughs) like my uh, reunion present to her and myself. Uh, But I did spend like a day in bed the next day after just to rest. It is a lot. It's a lot mentally on the body. Um, Yeah. But I really felt more in my skin this season. It's just hard. Like I've said this before and I'm sure I've said it to you. Like I'm not used to being on TV and, you know, unless it's something that like you've, you're trained to do or something, it's, it's still uncomfortable no matter how long you've done it. But, you know, I always have Rob in my ear, like relax, be yourself. And I just kept, I, the season was very intentional for me to just like not worry about how is coming off just be myself and no and it was great and i love that further into the season we're actually seeing that come out as people come for you because it is interesting i i've spoken about this and i know we have a new cast member which by the way is it anna marie wiley or Anne marie wiley what is the correct way to say her name it's spelled Anne marie but she says it anna marie because she's dutch okay cool that's a great answer that clears that up um, we saw in last week's episode where, you know, the Sutton with the dainty esophagus, we're getting off of that, thankfully. But then we see this point in Spain where it seems like she turns her attention to you. And I always wonder in those situations for any housewife, you're on a beautiful trip to Spain. Are you like, oh, no, wait, I, it's hot potato over to me now? How do you feel in those moments? I mean, I had a feeling that, you know, she was like coming for me because I called her out. And I want to be clear. I was never going to. I was never going to mention the doctor thing because like I'm just like quiet. I didn't want it. But she just I just felt like she kept like coming for Sutton and using it against her. And it really bothered me. And then once she accused me of the ED comment, I was like done because I'm like, that's too far. Cause that's actually like my, like now I get how Sutton's feeling. Like that's my health issue and it shouldn't be made fun of. So, you know, but I'm like, oh man, like she's really coming for me. I mean, and she just didn't relent. I mean, it was just yeah. nonstop. And I find that interesting is that, you do not pick these fights in these shows, but you actually will defend yourself. And I think that's what we want to see from you and you are doing, but it's not a comfortable position, especially when, like I say, you are a reliable narrator in this show. Um, did you expect to get that from a new cast member? Cause I think sometimes new cast members kind of like get the lay of the land and she threw herself directly in. Do you ever feel like sometimes you get picked off because people think you are potentially weak? Um, yes, I'm sure that, you know, when you look at sort of the scale of all the women, I can see why, you know, cause I am always smiling and I'm a bit quieter. So I, I get that. Um, but based on when Anne-Marie started the show, I'm, I'm not surprised, um, uh, because she really came in hot from the beginning. So, um, and you know, she was very clear. She's like, I have a lot of opinions. I want to get them out there. But, you know, I'm happy to defend myself when I really feel like I need to. But it's interesting watching back when in the next morning when Sutton's like come, she came to my room and she said, you know, you need yeah. a defense. I was already watching myself. I was already sick. 
And so I remember I was like, oh, I can't. Oh, I can tell. You were just like, you know what? That's not. uh, Yeah. uh, yeah, It was very uh, kind of a little bit of awkward. Right. So two hours later, I'm in the hospital. So I'm sure my blood pressure was already, you know, out of whack by then because I, I don't even remember that moment. So it's weird to watch back because I think I was so sick then, but had I not been sick, I probably would have gone in harder, but you know. What? No, I mean, that's, I, I feel like it, that's it, you did exactly what needed to be done. Also, there's a possibility that, that a ghost entered your body because the that's Spain uh, Airbnb is potentially haunted. We found out last last week. It was haunted. Like you, can it, feel, it was haunted. I'm not like down with that. I just, <laughs> and I just said, I'm appreciative to be here. Thank you. Please leave me alone. <laughs> do you do you? <laughs> Do you feel a difference this season? We came off such a contentious last season where we had certain cast members that are no longer there going so hard in the paint. Did you feel a little bit more or did you feel that the groups, the group dynamic was a little bit more relaxed and you were able to have a little yeah, bit more I mean, fun? The group dynamic will always change. Should I keep going? Yeah. Oh, why there you are. did you say? Okay. Sorry. There you are. I'll say whatever. I was like, you know, in any group, you know, you someone leaves, someone comes in, the dynamic always changes. And when you have um, such strong personalities, like the people who are on it and been there for so long, you know, they sort of drive how, how it's run, you know? So it allowed a little bit more space for me to be myself without, um, you know, it's just dynamics change. So yeah, I definitely felt more myself. Yeah, and it was interesting because Erica Jane has had a stronger season than she's had in years. You guys have been able to actually, it seems like, not relate to her, but actually get along with her much better than in previous seasons. Um, as a viewer, the one scene I would have loved to have been in is that THC dinner at Kyle's. Was that as wild as we saw on the screen? And being in there in person, what was that like for you to watch all of that go down? Yeah, that, that it's so funny watching it because I remember feeling like an audience member, like <laughs> sometimes I'm in it. Sometimes I'm like really like engaged in it. And then sometimes you're like, you have to, and anyone that says otherwise is lying. Like yeah. if you watch the show, there are moments where you're like, I'm on a set with these people. Cause this is so crazy. And like, this can't be real life. And then I kind of get back in. I'm like, Oh my God, these people are acting this way. Um, so no, it was wild. It was intense. And, um, yeah, I was just sort of like, like sitting in the stands watching these people just, (laughs) no, it was, it was so fun to watch, but I, you, then you were like, Oh, that's an actual real thing that took place. Um, my my best friend Nancy was there and she was like the only person that's like not been on TV yet on the show. And she just kept looking at me like, who are these people? And I'm like, it was so fun. Like she was my reliable narrator. You know, yeah, just well, Nan- Nancy was like, I do not want to be on TV ever again. If this is what it's like, it's too much. <laughs> um, your relationship with Sutton seems stronger than ever. And I love that we've seen that progress from your first season where it was at until now. Uh, have you met Santos? I have not met Santos. I wanted to during filming, but for some reason it never happened. But um, I'd like to meet Santos. I'm not like, I don't know if I'm going to get horse people coming at me. I'm not like a huge <laughs> horse. There's like horse people. Um, I'm just not like used to horses. So, but I would like to meet Santos. But she was telling me all about, like, I remember we were on the plane and like he was on the plane being flown over. And I'm like, how rich are you? Like who who can fly like horses on <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think in terms of like watching Sutton kind of blossom in terms of the show as well? How do you think Sutton has grown in your opinion? I mean, you are friends with her now, but have you seen her grown, grow into this role on Beverly Hills? Yeah. And you know, what's nice is like, when you ask me that question, I really think about like my friendship has grown while she has grown. So like when I met her, she was at a really like hard time in her life and I feel like, and we've talked about it. I do feel like she took it out on me and, but I don't know if she knew she was, you know, I don't think she was like, like really understanding where she was at, but watching like the next episodes and really her coming to her own, I'm like so proud of her. I texted her. I was like, you really like have shifted and, you know, I'm happy to be her friend during the shift too. And I think that's why we're so close. 
Yeah, no, it's really actually an awesome friendship to watch Blossom. Now, moving on to Dorit, one of your other cast members. Now this, you know, she said a really cutting comment that we all know that I think we all were like taken aback by because it was a shot like off in a talking head where she said something that I thought was really cruel and didn't kind of take into account any of their own personal relationships. Did you watch, when did you watch that? Did you watch that when we all watched that? Or did you know that shot was coming? No, you don't, you don't get to see anything until it airs. And so that was a confessional. Um, so I only saw it, you know, a day before you guys saw it. So that what that's why I clap back on my social. Um, yeah. I just felt like there were so many things you could say um, in response, especially she was responding to hearsay. So, you know, you can clap back at me. Like that's part of what we do. Um, but I felt like it was unwarranted, first of all, because half the cast members got married younger than I did. Yeah. And second, there's cast members that have a much wider age gap than me. So it felt very targeted in a way that was unfair. Um, and also, like, don't come for Rob Minkoff because he's like the goat. Like, he's like perfect. Dude, so. I had a conversation with Rob, and it was one of the funniest, like, kind of chill conversations. And it was very yeah. interesting to like. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, like he's so chill about all of this. And I'm like, oh my god, what about this? And he was like, yeah, like it's so chill. I just thought that was so interesting. It's like, yeah, don't take shots about Rob. Come on, he's like, he's it's another. Like, I get it on the outside. Like, we have a twenty. 20- years age gap like it's that's all fair game i totally get it we've been together over 20 years at this point like we've proven ourselves you know so it just feels like but that particularly that that comment felt not right it felt very loaded and i did not like that at all and rob's not a crazy guy the craziest we see rob is his dancing in certain episodes of real housewives of beverly hills it's the craziest we get with Rob. Wild. He's wild on the deal. <laughs> He's wild. Um, so uh, I also back to the, the Dorit thing really quick. Would we potentially be able to see any resolution with this? I think sometimes Dorit doesn't know how to sometimes effectively communicate and she just doesn't know the right things to say. So she goes sometimes harder than I think she even realizes. Uh, you know, is there resolution with this potentially? Um. I'm going to be annoying. I, you have to watch the reunion. Oh, the re- oh good. That's very, no, that's very, that's very good. It's very good. I'm lame. I'm lame. Well, Sorry. listen, I mean, this reunion we know filmed last week and it seems like from, you know, the, the, the Vumas, as Meredith Mark says out there, it seems like the wildest day we saw Andy posting that you had a sushi boat for lunch. And then I was like, oh my gosh. Then we heard rumors about Sutton and I was like, did she eat bad sushi? People were like, oh my God, they had to airlift her out of there. What do you think about in terms of the hysteria you are getting the biggest ratings on bravo this season that your show like i mean just juggernaut but what do you think when it comes to like people like me or memes and all that taking and just spreading rumors is it upsetting to you do you get a kick out of it because like i've heard i've heard insane things about this reunion already sure i mean i my first season, the re- like I remember reading, I was like, "Oh my god, what they think this?" And what? No, I think it's like it's all for fun at the end of the day, and um, I just I'm fascinated by people's fascination because like <laughs> I like I watched the show before, but like I think more like middle viewer, just like watch it, turn it off. I this whole world is so crazy to oh, me. Oh, Crystal, you don't even know. Like I really I, I, don't. I- I was like up till three in the morning doing a Vanderpump rules recap. And I just, at the end, I was like, what am I doing, man? Like you're a grown man. Like what is, what did, what does your least, life become? But at least you're like monetizing it. Like, <laughs> more like there's value in that. Like, I don't know. Listen, I'm, like, I'm not selling this podcast at Costco, like your coconut water. Like this, I mean, like I'm like, come on. Maybe one like day. I could set up like a studio at Costco right in the front, you know, it's <laughs> be awesome. Uh, but no, I just think it's wild. And, you know, people are like entertained by it and they get to sort of like get whisked away in like the fantasy of it all. And, you know, like let them, be, it's fun, you know? And then, I don't know, it's like almost like a mer- mystery, like a murder mystery of like what happened. <laughs> happened. Um, well, kind but- of. After this season of Salt Lake City, like it felt like that was like one long mystery. And then even Beverly yeah. Hills, you guys have that aspect this season because we already knew about the Kyle Mauricio relationship where there was a lot of mystery around that. And we yeah. do know the cameras picked back up. Um, in terms of Kyle this season, going in, did you immediately see a different Kyle? Because you had Eagle Woman at the very beginning and you had that Kumbaya moment. Did you get a sense of how different Kyle had become this season just working with her? 
Yes, because that was, you know, Eagle Woman was the very beginning. And, you know, we, I felt like she and I had like unfinished business after last reunion. And I, I brought it up. They didn't show it um, there. And she just was like, I'm sorry, let's move on. Like she was totally different. And I'm like, that's yeah. not the Kyle that I've known for two years who was like quite combative with me for no reason. But she was like checked out, like checked out in a way that was not, not checked out of the show, but like she was, something else was on her mind. Well, because she's, and, she's yeah. going through tons, which we see on the show. I yeah. love that the show puts context to what she's actually going through. And I'm like, man, we, we all go through some sort of trauma and it kind of makes sense, but you do see a very different Kyle. And I yeah. just wondering like, well, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, do you want to come back for another season after all of this? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. This is the first okay. year. Yes. Okay. That's because I remember talking to you last year and it was like, uh, I don't know if it's worth it. I have my own kid. I have my own life. I have my family. And that's yeah. what I was hoping that you would say is that you would want to come back. Yeah. I mean, I still have all that, but you know, I, it was just, you know, I'm sure every year it's up and down for everybody and depending on how it goes, you know, for me, I, I, I enjoyed it much more this year and, um, yeah, I would love to, I think it's, it's, I don't know. It's crazy. I don't, I'm not gonna do it forever. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sign a lifetime contract right now, Crystal. Lifetime, but I would uh, definitely want to come back next year. Yeah. Uh, also, it was very uh, enjoyable this season that we didn't really have a lot of leaks like we've had in certain other seasons. So a lot of this, even though I knew kind of like building block storylines, I didn't know the specifics. And I think that actually makes your guys' job that much easier that we can actually be surprised when these things air. Um, when you're going through this, I mean, is it turned into a game of like the traders? I always say housewives have turned into a survivor like competition show. Do you feel that of like, I just got to survive the season. I just got to survive the reunion. Yeah, I, I, well, I felt that way before. And now that I've gone through this season, I realize like, I don't need to feel that way anymore. You know, like, because as long as I'm, I'm myself and I'm honest and like, none of it matters because I know I'm being honest, you know, whereas before it was like, it felt that like, and I don't know if it was the dynamic of the group um, that made me feel that way, but uh, you know, they're still like, you know, they're, these women are tough. <laughs> and you're tough too. You're I'm competitive too. too. Yeah. I'm tough in a different way, but um, you know, I will say I've gotten tougher. I, my skin is a lot thicker. <laughs> next season you just come in all leather smoking a cigarette like let's go ladies let's go i would love if you just free um so uh wrapping up this season do you think there's any big misconceptions that the audience is not seeing in regards to who you are this season um you know obviously it would be nice if there was a like a little bit more about my business or people knew that about me that like you know, because I think that's hard for Rob, like Rob, he's like wants so much for the world to see, you know, sort of a whole more whole picture. And also like, you know, for him, it's like, oh, am I just like, it, it, I think he also feels it reflects him, right? Like he's yeah. just like taking care of me, whatever, which he, by the way, he does, but um, just that there's more, but by the way, every year more is revealed. So that's okay. You know, you just got like, there's only so much airtime and um, but other than that, no, I mean, is it all of me? I feel like you, are, you know me much better. Yeah. It's not all of me, but it is a part of me. It's a real part of me, who I am. Uh, but now that I know it's, I have to give more of myself and show my relaxed self. And because um, I'm like really the funniest person on the planet. And like, people just, <laughs> so, like that's on me. That's not on anyone else. So. Well, also you're, uh, you're, you're a self-proclaimed, what is it? Not debutante. You're a self-proclaimed, uh, what, what, what is it? What do they call Socialite. You're a self-proclaimed socialite, according to Anne-Marie Wiley, which I thought was hysterical. Um, no, this has been such a joy seeing you this season as we're in our last couple of minutes here. Um, I, I do want to commend you for your performance and staying there. Uh, in terms of your brother though, I mean, your brother had a really strong scene with you where he was like, listen, I'm my own man now. Um, where are you with your brother? And, you know, where is he with his relationship with his ex? So, um, my poor brother, like, I really, like, he really <laughs> gave himself up to, like, ex sort of expose, like, his personal life. Um, and I just thought it was an interesting sort of take on what happens like in a Chinese family that went through COVID and stuff. 
Um, he is with someone else that he loves very much and she's lovely and they're in Asia right now. And, um, he's he doing good. He's doing really well, but he doesn't tell me too much. So we talk about work. That is actually <laughs> weird, hard on me. It's weird. Like I'm like, cause I, I feel like I can't pry anymore, but I'm committed to not prying and I'm committed to like letting it. Yeah out for himself because he is my older brother. He is a year older than me. And um, I just wanted to be happy. And that's really, he knows that. That's it. I like that one, two punch of your mom and you actually kind of like over, I thought that was very, uh, you know, relatable in certain ways. And I hope his happiness as well. Uh, lastly, are you on a group text with all the Beverly Hills housewives after the reunion was ever, did anybody leave the chat after the reunion? So we're all still on it. <laughs> and the S12, but la or S13, last year someone left within like a minute that we wrapped the reunion. I bet I can um, guess, yeah. And yes, we're still on it. It's, you know. Okay, good. That's good. We want to move forward, especially with you in the off season. Also, if you get a chance, go to Crystal's basement. She has the best parties there. After the direct TV Kathy Hilton thing, she had like a who's who of like every housewife you could possibly imagine and celebrity in her basement. Was that shocking for you to have all of those people in your basement? It was a random thing because uh, like Larsa lives on my street. She's like, do you, you want to drive together? I said, pop over before for an hour. And then it just ended up being these random people. Rob literally came down. He's like, who are these people? <laughs> Rob. I was like, Rob Bravo. He goes, are they, are they house? Like he had no. <laughs> Who's yeah. Larsa Pippa? Yeah, no, that's amazing. Cause they're, they're legend. Like that's like the Mount Rushmore of like people in your basement. And I love, that's what I love about Rob. Like, it's just like, yeah, man, whatever. Uh, like, also. Drink. He's like, you had no idea who anybody was. Um, also I told Rob last time, but please remind him that I'm trying to option ugly leather pants as a character for a cartoon that he does. I think the ugly leather pants would be a great cartoon that he makes. Um, Crystal Kung Minkoff, you're going to Mexico next week. What is in, what's your plan for the off season? What are you looking to do? I know you're involved in charity and things like that. How do we support you besides the coconut water? I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a champion for the Alzheimer's association. So that's something that's dear to my heart. Um, as you know, my father passed from that. Um, no, I mean, supporting real cocoa is amazing. You can find it anywhere and we're just so proud of it. We're going to roll out some new products this year. I'm going to start a YouTube channel, cooking channel very soon. I've been filming a lot, so I have going to, can you, can, can I come be in it and you teach me how to cook like a sandwich what? or something like that? That would be I amazing. Yes. We'll put, we'll put it up on Betches. It'll be great. Um, uh, Crystal, I know you have to go to your next thing. I just wanted to thank you for always making time for me and this show. Uh, it really does mean a lot. And I know I try not to be ever like friendly with, but you are just one of the nicer people that I've met doing all of this. And that's why uh, I just am so proud of you and watching you go through this show and keeping your head up when certain people say wild things. So I can't wait for your reunion. I can't wait for this week's episode. And thank you, Crystal. I hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it.